Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. If you did not manage to catch the beautiful breakdown covered by Diffuse in the CSGO round, this is ACGL covering a really cool little derby set up here between Paul Ruiz Gymnasium and Gray High School Port Elizabeth. And as we're just talking about what's happening in today as a whole, PRG sets up a really nice early goal here. I am, of course, Altruism bringing you this action. We're starting off between the two B teams, Paul Ruiz Gymnasium B versus Grey High PE uh, B team. After this, we're going to have another best of five with the A team, some of the top up and coming players in the country at this stage. Unfortunately, Grey High not off to a good start as Paul Ruiz picks up a second one after a bit of a missed clear in front of the Nets. But if you guys are not big fans of Rocket League, if you don't know what's going on in the high school scene as a whole, we are starting to see more and more schools being able to pick up and support their, their young players in their growth towards esports as an actual potential career option. You know, as people and parents and children have always aspired to be cricket players or rugby players or soccer players, we're starting to hope that more and more people are seeing esports such as Rocket League, Counter Strike, and League of Legends, which we have coming up later. Uh, people are seeing these games more and more as potential career paths. And so schools like Paul Ruiz and um, here Grey High, we're seeing these guys start pushing their youngsters. You know, parents are getting behind them, letting them practice for longer and longer hours. That the teams are getting coaches behind them, teaching them how to play a little bit better, improve upon mistakes. And, and really just grow a new level to the com emerging competitive scene in South Africa. So I love to see these sort of little testers coming out here. Uh, it's always interesting to see what level the, the new next generation is wanting to bring to the table. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a co-caster today, so you're just going to have to uh, uh, join me alone as we get to exhibit this this. Exhibition is a really nice word there for what these two teams are looking to do, what, what level they're at right now. Let's jump into this. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to try and get into the lobby. The, the Discord call is breaking up quite a lot. So getting to see a bit of the action, some great action there. If you guys managed to see there, Grey High managing to pick up a counter goal here. Cleared a long way down the field. Not 100% sure on the name of that one. I'll get in there as soon as I can. And... At least some nice fight out from this Grey High team taking two early goals. I think what we can expect to see in these B teams is players who have got a basic idea of the, the game styles. They might have a couple of cool tricks up their sleeve. They've tried to learn some new mechanics and the basic ideas of positioning, but where they still struggle is sometimes just hitting the ball cleanly. You know, Rocket League is actually a lot harder than it looks. The concept, very, very simple, especially if you're not a big fan of esports in general. Rocket League is a great one where you can pick it up. The general idea, put the ball in the goal. Hit it. left completely open there dan the man 
coming in here with a great shot after this touchdown. The omelette setting that one up off the backboard, leaving it open. No defenders there because two of them jumped for that previous challenge. And a great way for Gray to bring it up. We have two minutes left in this. Five minute matches mean that every goal really can make a big difference. And the fact that PRG now without that two goal lead that they started with are going to have a little bit more work to do. Can't rely on Gray making too many more mistakes. A nice cutoff at the end there, shuts down, and Gray seem to have definitely taken more of the aggressive stance into this game for the rest of this game. A nice flick over the shot, sends it high. Gray lurking, waiting for this ball to come up. Two of them up for this, means that their third player can't jump out for it. No, a miss in front of the net though from Reismere. Manages to leave it though, PRG still able to clear it out. Bit more under pressure than they'd like to be. Gray hanging around and a nice intercept. A nice just slam back and towards the side. Creates an opportunity. This one going to skitter around the left-hand side of the goals. Dropping down dangerously. Gray in position. Pops it up one more time. The shot is there. No one contesting it. It's a banger straight into the woods, the center of the net. Beautiful shot here. Gray completely turning this around. And the good positioning, the good patience leaves this open. And no one from the scrambling PRG side is able to stop that. So PRG capitalizing on early mistakes from Gray, but the later we go into this, it seems like Gray starting to feel their, their controllers a little bit better, you know, starting to warm up a bit, read their opponents a little bit better, and understand what they have to do. A good sign of a mature team. Paul Roos, renowned, of course, across the esports world, uh, starting to really develop a name for themselves in any game that they pick up, uh, showing a lot of power and potency in their CSGO lineup, of course, showing last year as well in other tournaments that they were able to dominate entire brackets very few teams actually able to take a game off them let alone a best of five series or even bet better best of seven series so a team that's starting to get a lot more experience you know you're starting to get senior players who have played in multiple competitions and that can really be the exposure difference between two different teams. Gray, though, uh, sporting a lot more of the local players and uh, representatives than I would have expected. But PRG, within 20 seconds left of the game, manages to pop this out. And a nice read, very high up in the air. Dan the man, unable to catch that as he comes off the wall. And it levels out this first game. Very exciting, very back and forth action between these two teams. Three apiece. And if you, ladies and gentlemen, aren't aware, if the timer goes down to past zero seconds, the ball has to touch down before the end of the match. And so as long as the team can keep the ball up, keep the ball alive, there is infinite opportunities. We're going to see an opportunity here. PRG trying to work it out of their side, but they're going to force it down towards the other side of the field. It's our first Rocket League game of the day, and we are already into an overtime goal. Golden goal going to make the difference here for these two teams. There's a best of five, as I've said before, which means you need three games to win. First game, though, really does sometimes set the tempo. It doesn't determine everything, and especially not in a contest this back and forth and this evenly matched between these two teams. Both teams with their share of brilliant moments, but also, also with their, their share of devastating misses that have cost them. And you got to think, with it being leveled out right now, if through one of those mistakes, is going to come down to to really punish them and that's the difference between a good team and a bad team a good team will capitalize on mistakes and make very few of their own a bad team unfortunately though or an up-and-coming team that needs to develop to let balls go out in the open a demo comes out here and a little bit too much aggression one player going for boost in the corner means that prg has just the amount of space that they needed to to be able to pull that off and so back and forth this pendulum swings in the first This is not part of a tournament, ladies and gentlemen. This is just a standoff game between these two schools. They have recognized each other as very good. Shots being coming in from both sides are there. A little bit more in the favor of PRG coming out with 11 shots to just the five of Gray College. But Gray College managing to put a lot higher percentage of those away. Very spread out points for each of these guys, showing that everyone willing to come to the party and do a lot of work. Uh, of course, saves being OG Fly in Fork. A beautiful name. This is one of the best things about esports is you don't have to take your own name. You can come up with some wonderful ones of your own. Vivid Ber uh, Vivid Bergia, I assume that is the other player that we haven't talked about from Grey High. Everyone's standing out pretty well so far as we head into our second game. PRG up 1-0 in series. 
That's going to be reflected on the overlay in just a second, I'm sure. But Grey College looking to come back. They managed to do it from a lot of pressure down, really shore up some of their mistakes and make very potent, very constructive forward movements in their attempts to get a goal. This one pinches out nicely here. Grey College putting some pressure towards the center, following it up with a 50-50, keeps it on the blue side of the net. ERG now kind of stuck in the corner. Good chip, good team play coming out there. Dang getting in a bit of aerial dribble, but loses it at the end, sends it crashing down towards the blue net. It's gonna roll up and over. In fact, oh, no one from Gray forward thinking enough to come into that one. Challenged it as it drifted around the inside. Gray though, always keen to charge forward, make offensive challenges, even just spot out the play. Dan trying to make a little bit of a chip, a sneaky slower play around the PRG defenders, neither team managing to come up and neither one being punished for some of their vulnerabilities. Dang, Dang now popping out towards the center, nice and quickly up is the gray hard player. Dang just rotating around the back line, sends it high, sends it very high and no one able to read it from the gray high side. Means that OG fly in fork, able to pop this a lovely long distance shot, just lofting it out of the reach of anyone. It's of course difficult to read that. But if you set up in your positioning and always ready for these long attempts, especially when they're not under pressure, you've got to be able to get up for those at the back line. If you ladies and gentlemen are joining us on the ACGL page, be sure to, to let us know in the chat who you think is going to win this. Are you supporting your team? Give a little shout out. You know, this isn't sports, so your war cries have to come in the form of some, some chats. Uh, shout out for your team are you here for a specific player anyone that we need to watch out for we'd love to get you guys involved get some crowd action going on here a lovely little touch by omelette sets it up towards the center gray high definitely wanting to come back in uh not unable to play from a deficit and a nice extra touch there means that rice has to make a very important and very forward thought Reed uh, Dang nearly getting a pinch towards the center there gets intercepted as it comes off the backboard shot coming through here Good goaltending and Dan the man following up, trying for a team pinch with his teammate. Still the spread out nature here of PRG, managing to cut off every one of the, the retreats. OG flying fork, slightly misreads the bounce and unable to chip that towards a po powerful shot. Since they're gonna be the other way, Gray High now trying to put on some pressure. Coming off the ceiling, Dang trying to pop it, just hanging around. Either of the teams wants to overcommit. Reismere having very little boost means that he's got less mobility, can't charge forward enough. Dang gets a beautiful first touch as actually following it up, but didn't have the boost to speed towards it and try to get that extra touch before it's fended away. Still a ping pong back and forth. PRG looking dangerous at these lengths, always able to get solid clears out. Following it up nice and aggressively. Good technicality coming out in a slower play. Dribbles around the side, but ever trying to chip it out through corner drifts towards the center nets and prg unable to pick up on this one means gray high somehow escapes by the skin of their teeth two minutes left on the clock just a single goal in it's gray high being put under pressure still always managing to get down towards the other side of the field this is a nice chip out though it's still going to be dang always very quick to the ball able to intercept that turn the pressure around and then in fact it puts the gray high players out of position Again, the ball goes down towards the orange side of the net. Another 20 seconds have gone and PRG are up with a second goal. Being able to just bat aside any of those uh, attempts, those offensive opportunities that Greyhound was trying to manufacture, get it down towards the other side of the field, sinks it in the back of the net. And PRG, having already gotten a game in hand, is now two goals up with a minute 40. Grey was, of course, able to turn the solo lead around previously, but they had a lot more time in the bank. And so a minute 40 is still possible, still very possible, especially when you've got that opportunity. PRG wanting to close it out now in 10 more seconds, turning around such a beautiful first touch, goes up and over and then decides to air drag and muscle it upon the late reacting defenders from Gray. Eventually gets a touch at the end to secure it. The great intention coming out from the PRG side. And I'd like to see Gray, they've had some opportunities where the ball has dropped down in front of the net. And uh, not having the consistency or the confidence in the, the touch from their second player, more wanting to stay back and conservatively lead the game. It's punishing them a little bit. We've seen the sort of tempo control be so important in higher levels of Rocket League. I've gotten to do some of the European collegiate Rocket League scene and that 
has been the consistent factor. Even the most disciplined teams on defense still need to come forward at some stage, still need to, to take the game into their own initiative to be able to put some pressure down the other way. At this stage, it's all been PRG. Even now, Gray pushing for the first time in a long time across that halfway net easily rebuffed not able to even get a shot in and it's just going to be a dunking high lofted shot of a 50 50 in fact a beautiful late touch um just looking for maybe a pass off the backboard but doesn't need it sinks it through the angle and with 47 seconds left on the board you've got to think that gray has lost some of that tenacity some of that momentum that they used to rally themselves in the first game come back from that 2-0 deficit they are going to have to do a reverse sweep here, the B side under pressure. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is also, of course, just the first game of the day. We still have the two A sides with even more intensity, even more action and higher mechanics to try and fight it out. Great. Hey, looking to put on a late offensive opportunity, try and swing around a little bit of that mentality and that morale in their favor. Not able to do it just yet. Once again, PRG, PRG looking impenetrable in the back line turning away all of these shots must admit it's always fun to do one of these casts on my own i, I get to, to waffle for much longer uh, my casters I, I love the interaction with them they make it easier sometimes they certainly build up the hype when we get action like this a late goal coming in here gray high certainly not done not dead yet they have to pull off three games in a row if they want to pull this off but you've got to do it one goal at a time and just able to turn that mentality up is great as we go into the break between these games nearly halfway through the series the PRG just gonna let the ball trickle down in fact gonna go for one last one Reismere trying to go up for the air dribble doesn't get off the wall nicely even had a teammate following up and this is what I mean about the buzzer beaters is the fact that as long as you keep the ball from touching the ground you can effectively get it down towards the other side of the field try getting a late goal and if the series is level you can swing it in your favor PRG picking it up two games to zero at this stage not needing to swing anything in their favor great and again you can see a little bit more dominance fewer saves coming out from brg simply because of the fewer shots coming out from gray yet again 11 shots for prg this time again restricted to five goal, five shots for gray very very similar mechanics between that the difference being though that gray not managing to this is actually the the scoreboard for the first game that's why it looks so similar but the 4-1 scoreline, um, definitely representative of how strong PRG is looking at controlling the entire tempo of the game. Whether it's the midfield where they can turn around and keep that pressure building when they're on the offense. they good rotations back that allow them to clear out any attempts from Grey College. And the wonderful booming clears that sets it up from their own side of the field. PRG looking to have a very good understanding of what they need to do at all phases of the game. And then having good consistent mechanics to be able to pop this out. Dan going up. He's been very proficient in the air. Gets a good second touch there. But uh, pulled out the commitment from the defender. Now it's going to be another touch towards the center. Very patient play. Doesn't have to follow it up into the wall because he's just trying to bait out defenses, defenders. Way down the resource of Gray College. But does it with one touch. Pulling all three of them into it. Still, they don't manage to turn aside the, the poking threats. And PRG go one goal up, just 17 seconds. Certainly not swayed by that late goal of Grey College. Uh, Grey High, apologies. Um, this is Grey High in Port Elizabeth, if you guys are interested. If you're just tuning in, PRG, Paul Rus Gymnasium, having set up a friendly derby against Grey High. And they got some of the, the local talent in here, showcasing a full day of esports action. We just got to see some Counter-Strike action earlier with the wonderful Diffuse cast. And later we are going to get to see some League of Lack Legends action. I'm of course Altruism. And all of this brought to you by ACGL. Really doing work in PRG. Uh, reveling un under the spotlight here. ACGL doing huge amounts of work to develop esports at every level, bringing high level competition this is not, not a reading, by the way, that I have to do. I've just worked with ACG a lot, and I, I love to work with them. They, they put on huge high-level competitions at the, the highest level, get some of the best players in the world. We just saw uh, their competition with Level Fox, uh, the showdown where it was an actual LAN experience for the top Rocket League and FIFA players. Uh, they are starting to build the university scene, um, and now starting to launch the school scene, starting out in the Western Cape, and then soon to come, uh, we hope to all of the other provinces start building up just grassroots esports that we'd love to see. 
happen. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about what these two teams are uh, doing right here. Um, that's what the whole day between these two teams, a lovely play here. Great college, not out of this. Great college, B-side, rallying. They've got to win three games in a row, and that's a good way to start it. Sends it up, bangs it down towards the center. Good aggressive play to try and give themselves the chance to put that one in. And a good day of Rocket League, a good day of esports in totality here. Just so many members of the community coming together uh, just for the fun of it. That's the best part. No prize pools, no, just bragging rights, of course. Uh, this is how derbies are formed. And this, these are the derbies that uh, we're, we're going to start seeing develop between schools. Everyone has their rugby derbies and their cricket derbies, the school you really want to beat. And for a lot of the players, this is the first time they're getting to be on a, a broadcast. They might be able to go back, watch these VODs, maybe hear about the things that we're chatting about. I, I hope I can give you guys, if you are watching this back later, some things to focus on, some different opportunities, you know, things you've got to be able to do. Stuff like getting caught up in your corner, stuff like reacting late. You've got to be able to get those shots out of your own half, relieve some pressure and be able to turn around. The fact that PRG overwhelming in their numbers, managed to get them back one ball ahead in the series. Uh, for those of you, these players who haven't got a chance to be on the broadcast, it might also give them something to aspire to. You know, we get to see some great level, especially with the RLCS now taking place in Sub-Saharan Africa. Of course, a lot of the South African teams starting to play to represent Africa on the RLCS stage at the wild card slots later on this year. Oh, the shot going across the crossbar. Great College setting up an attempt to try and level up this game. A touch across the goal there. No one to follow it up and dispossess his own player there. But not able to turn it around. And now it's PRG on the offense. So a lot of aspirations that the young uh, future stars of South Africa can, can start aspiring towards, you know, actual prize money coming through, people are able to buy themselves new computers, start putting away savings accounts and make esports a, a genuine reality. We've got 16 year old players left, right and center, 16, 70 year old players getting to go to LAN events, getting to fight with the top players in the country and soon to be the top players in the world. Uh, and really showcase what they've got. A lot of room and some very dedicated players putting hundreds and thousands of hours uh, a month or even a week, you know, hundreds of hours a week into the, their esports, taking it very seriously. And the results are paying off. Esports bursaries starting to come out for players in the country. And it's very exciting to see what the growth of Rocket League, especially uh, personally, but Rocket, but esports as a whole is coming to do. PRG managing to pick up an extra goal here with just two minutes left on the clock to get back into the action here. As exciting as the real world is for PRG B side, they must be quite excited right now. Two goals ahead, two minutes left on the board, and two games in hand mean that they just have to hold on. They don't actually have to do any more constructive work in the, in the future to be able to hold on to this. They're going to have to do defensive work, though. Gray College instantly able to pull this back. Dan the man being able to pick up a goal. Uh, Gray College, nice kickoff, good aggressive play. And this is what I want to see out of them. Gray College having shown lots of composure so far. Doing a, a little bit more work. Probably needs to be a little bit more confident. At least read out when you've got the advantage. When you're able to get control of it. When you've got the possession on it. When you can start linking passes towards your own teammates. So you see someone on a decent run. Back them up. Be there for the second touch. Here's a good offensive opportunity. I'd like to see some aggression coming out from Gray College. Of course, PRG has always given Gray College room to be concerned about the counter-attack. Those long plays able to constantly turn around. If someone's not in a good rotation, it leaves them out of position. Still, everyone having to learn to position. And little touches like that make it harder to go forwards with purpose and confidence in your team. You've got to react sometimes to what the mistakes are going to be. And that does engender a little bit more of a reserve play style. You know, you're going to be the person there where everyone else has finished clashing together. When the dust settles, you can go in and snipe a good little ball. Maybe that's what Grey High would like to be doing. They've just clocked less than a minute left that they need to pick up this goal. But because it's just a single goal, we could have that being scored at any stage, even after the buzzer. So far, Grey High has been able to clasp up this offensive opportunity crowd out the blue goal unfortunately not being able to get anything out of that they put a lot of pressure for a long time it's going to be interesting to see if they can pull build up that same effective pressure in the next 30 seconds they don't have a lot of time left 
good touch, starts stringing together some passes, just over 20 seconds left. A high chip from Paul Ruiz wants to try and settle this right here and right now. If they can take this in a clean 3-0 sweep, they would love to. They even just baiting out this time, wasting it out, ticking down that clock is what PRG would like to do. There's one more opportunity coming out here. Oh no, a chip over the top, baits out one of the players, Grey High. The ball triggers towards the blue net. They're actually gonna do it with two seconds left on the board. Grey High somehow manages to still keep themselves in it, go towards an overtime. The aggression that I was talking about. We need this and we need it now. Go for the challenge. It manages to come out there, PRG. Having an opportunity within the last 30 seconds, maybe go out a little bit too far. As soon as the ball touches down, we are going to go into our second overtime of three matches. And PRG would love to sort this out. It does seem like Grey High have a good kickoff there. Sent down the long way. PRG yet again being able to relieve that pressure so quickly and turn it around. PRG again would love to put this in. They've set up that midfield pressure that they so well known for not a great touch at least puts it backwards towards his own teammate they're starting to get ca caught up in the, the corner a little bit of a bumping miscommunication though here comes gray high they've got the better positioning the dive across goes across all the possession in the hands of gray high they've got to get this next goal if they want to stay into this competition they get a good pinch down towards the blue goal prg under a bit of pressure there the demo attempt this dunk attempt not proving to be anything instead a good pinch comes out from prg Sending it down towards the orange goal. One goal could determine whether we are going to see a potential comeback here from Grey High or if PRG going to settle it out right now. Ball pinging back and forth across the field. Aggressive opportunity from Grey High now sets it up. PRG turns it down towards the other side of the field. That's not a great touch. Leaves it open, but no one from PRG wanting to put in that aggressive place. You can feel the tension is palpable between these two teams. No one wants to put themselves out of position with a bad play. We've seen both teams show mechanical brilliance, but also show weaknesses and a weakness in the wrong rotation. A place where you've just caught out and they've got an extra shot on you could be the difference maker. This is a dunk from Longfield. PRG going to be able to sink it. We've talked about it a couple of times, the fact that they can send the ball just the whole length of the field towards the goal. This one comes off the 50-50, but PRG looking so comfortable in their own half eventually seals it out it's three games to zero those games close though two of them going to an overtime gray high b putting in every opportunity that they can but not really being able to get consistently down to the other side of the field and put on toxic potent offensive opportunities congratulations goes to paul Rus gymnasium's b team that sets out our first best of five, ladies and gentlemen. We do have another one coming your way. Of course, it is going to be the two A teams and our friendly derby coming to you in just a second. I hope we've got a little splash to show for you. If you guys want to go get something to drink, I could definitely use one. Chatting for 35 minutes. It's straight. It's fun. I enjoy it. I'm a teacher, so it is my, my job, my pleasure, my privilege. And it will be that pleasure and privilege to bring you the next half of the action just after this. Don't go anywhere. And that can really be the exposure difference between two different teams. Gray though, uh, sporting a lot more of the local players and uh, representatives. Out towards the center, nice and quickly up is the Gray High player. Dang just rotating around the back line. Sends it high, sends it very high, and no one able to read it. Uh, of the teams wants to overcommit. Reismere having very little boost means that he's got less mobility. Can't charge forward enough. Dang gets a beautiful first touch as actually following that to turn the pressure around and in fact it puts the Grey High players out of position. Again, the ball goes down towards the orange side of the net. Another 20 seconds have gone. Wanting to close it out now in 10 more seconds. Turning around, such a beautiful first touch. Goes up and over and then decides to air drag and muscle of a dunking high lofted shot of a 50-50, in fact, a beautiful late touch. Um, just looking for maybe a pass off the backboard. Certainly build up the hype when we get action like this. A late goal coming in here. Grey High certainly not done, not dead yet. They have to pull off three games in a row if they want to pull this off. College, not out of this. Great College B-side rallying. They've got to win three games in a row, and that's a good way to start. It sends it up. 
bangs it down towards his horse. Uh, this is how derbies are formed. And this, these are the derbies that uh, we're, we're going to start seeing develop between schools. Everyone has their rugby derbies in there. Stuff like reacting late, you've got to be able to get those shots out of your own half, relieve some pressure and be able to turn around. The fact that PRG overwhelming in their numbers, PRG managing to pick up an extra goal here with just two minutes left on the clock to get back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are now into... Okay, it seems like we're going to just restart this. Uh, maybe back into this a little prematurely. But if you are interested, we are here for our second Rocket League game of the day. Of course you're interested. You're here. You're supporting school esports. Aren't we all? That's so cool to see. Um, I hope that you're all having a great day so far. I hope you enjoyed the Counter-Strike. If you didn't manage to get to see that diffuse casts with such a, a great coverage of that um big thanks to of course acgl for helping our paul Rose gymnasium and gray high showcase this wonderful derby if this is the first one you're jumping into right now we have paul Rose gymnasium and gray high port elizabeth coming together wonderful friendly game day fighting it out so we just got to see the two b-sides in rocket league fighting it out paul Rose from gymnasium taking it very close competition at three nil scoreline by the end of it but very, very close. Two of those games, of course, going to an overtime. Very, very exciting to see. Good mechanics coming out there. Really nice to see some people trying for those air dribbles. Um, starting to see some, some good booming clears, some good basics coming through. A little bit of things to work on here and there. Just some rotations being caught out there. The standard double commits that happen at all stages. And I'm, I'm excited to see what these A teams can do. Porus Gymnasium A team is one of the best teams in the country in fact doing very well in the bs gaming league last year and their group stage they went nine and oh in the premier division great representation for them and a great representation of what the future of rocket league in south africa is looking like and what a path they have ahead of them we have so many tournaments coming out there of course acgl going to be hosting the acgl schools league very soon across multiple titles uh, they've also got the university league that they're working on recently. Uh, so even when students now graduating high school, starting to look to further studies, there is going to be continuation. And those people who make a name for themselves, whether at the school level, at the university level, there is going to be such a strong, developed, competitive scene on the club level once you uh, start, start proving that you can run with the big players because they are going to be huge players up for grabs and con in contention uh, of so many big titles now i was talking about oral cs earlier i gotten to see a lot of that you've got the likes of pirates xd and bravado gaming these teams that have come through and really started to make a name for themselves not just on the local scene but on the international scene as well these guys are trying to secure themselves a spot at the wild cards where they get to fly overseas get paid a bunch of money to go play rocket league in a uh, I'm not sure where it's being held. I think it's Switzerland, but I stand to be corrected on that. So, uh, what an opportunity. And the people going across there are as young as 16 years old. So, people at high school level that come from schools like Paul Roos Gymnasium, 
have got such an opportunity. It looks like we're going to be making the lobby again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to just throw quickly to a break until we are all ready and waiting to go. Enjoy the music. Uh, I'm sure that you are just as excited as I am to be able to jump into this. We'll see you in a second. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in our game. It is going to be PRG A side versus Grey High A side. Uh, two teams coming in here. PRG, I am excited. It is, in fact, the same players that did so well in VS Gaming last year. Blade, Dang, who we got to see in the previous match, and Zit Inferno versus 8 by Mark. And straight away, PRG off, taking nearly a second. Uh, to be able to get this one off. Just a missed jump there on kickoff from Alpha Jojo. Uh, allows Dang to put that in. Dang showing off, and that explains why he was doing so well in the aerial play in that previous game. Uh, really mastering mechanics, showing off there. Blade up to this one nice and quickly. Doesn't put it on net, though. Gets a good second touch, though, and sends Alpha Joe scattering in circles. The good save coming out there from Parky. Parky, I recognize from ARPX, or Apex, as they like to be called. Had to chat to a couple of international guys about how to pronounce that one, but uh, good player. Really excited to see what he can do. Very excited to see that he is still in the school leagues. Uh, good up and coming player. Very, very reminiscent. And this is the sort of thing Alpha Jojo paying off for that earlier mistake on kickoff and uh, for the, the near miss that was nearly the chip over the top. Definitely he turned to running circles around his opposition this time as Grey High A side managed to pull this back. 
I would, I would say coming into this Grey High, probably the underdogs, uh, just not mechanically as sound, don't have as much competitive experience. Grey High, of course, had a lot of Rocket League teams last year, but have started to narrow that down to, to just being more selective, uh, really emphasizing, putting the time and effort into training their players. I love to see it. Organizing scrims like this is the best way to try and develop your players, and especially against teams that are going to show you exactly what it is. Um, to, to be a good team and to consistently perform well, especially at the school league. It'll be interesting to see how much they can pull out of these. And so, myself, Ultraism, is here to keep you company, break down the action if you're not very familiar to Rocket League, and hopefully give a little bit of guidance to these players. Um, as for me, I am currently a high school teacher at Thomas More College. My team, also fanatical about Rocket League, also very excited to see what their Valorant has to do. There's a challenge out towards the other yeah, scores, get in towards the Valorant Cups that we're starting to see more of. Very excited to see all these games being made available to high school students. And uh, certainly a lot of them have so much to show for it. Blade trying to take this one up, probably wanted to chip on that first play uh, to try to pop it up and over. Dang now putting this backwards, has to retreat back towards his own goal off the Jojo. Doing a good job of just keeping that ball under his team's control. Doesn't need to touch it to just Bait out the opposition, now hangs around very well. Mark, eight by Mark, wanting to get a touch on this. A good attempt by Alpha Jojo to get it across there. Parky up early onto the wall, goes for the first challenge. Doesn't manage to get out that second 50-50. With a little bit too much space here, does eventually get muscled off the ball. Inferno, always gonna be happy to touch it up there. Pass it nicely down towards his own team. And just like the B-side we got to see earlier, a nice consistent ability to clear the ball out. Parky left midfield now with very little boost. And Alpha Jojo dumping the tank to try and clear this one out. Still doesn't get it very far. And some restrictions on boost here for Grey High. Could prove to be detrimental. Paul Rus, led by Inferno, managed to capitalize on that increasing amount of pressure. Just keeping it there and thereabouts. Never letting that ball really get past the halfway line. Eventually gets up an open opportunity. And with a blistering 106k an hour shot, it puts Paul Roos from Nazem back into the lead. All right, so this is a best of five. If you're interested, we have five minute games apiece. Winner of three of those, or the first winner of three of those, shall I say, is going to be crowned our victor for today. Paul Roos from Nazem B-side managed to take that three games in a row in our first series for the day. It's gonna be up to PRG to see if they can match that task or Grey High certainly uh, close matches in the first one it'll be interesting to see how their top players start to match out a beautiful pass across there into the linking shot Inferno not being able to get that dang slows it out gives his teammates time to rotate around Blade still hanging around and Inferno taking up that third man position Blade just beautiful rotations coming out from Paul Rose this is something that teams should look to emulate always able to when you've got two players who've dove in for that first challenge, try to make an opportunity. If nothing comes out of that, don't go as hard as you can with your third man. It leaves that gap in your defenses. You've got to cycle it around, control the tempo of your possession to be able to take it away. Now some confusion coming out here from Grey High. Managed to get around to Dank, but again, the rotations. Good high ball though. Jojo looking to make something happen there. Puts it down too close towards the enemies. Putting it in front of them, allows them to turn it around and Grey High again, scuttling in defense. Managed to cut it off in halfway. It's up to Parky to be able to try cut this off. Dang, doing a good job to cut it across the field. Consistently get more and more touches. Just force more Grey High players to invest resources into shutting him down on his offense. It leaves Inferno and uh, Dang, I think it was in the back line and to be able to work and just stay around for any loose touches. Dang, going to be the one to take this up now. Dispossesses one of the players. Dang still again holding around, just making opportunities for his team. Hands it off to Blade. Now it's Blade's opportunity to push forward. It's going to be up to eight by Mark. A play on the famous player, Mark by eight, by the way, if you don't know. Um, really cool to see these young players with icons that they look up to already in the game. Players that have started to become renowned. Uh, and doing very well in the RLCS recently. Oh no, the touch! Jojo wanting to put it aside, desperately had to make something happen there to be able to, to shut down this long clear. Dang had put it on the back, the, the back of the goal. And so it was up to any attempts there, just unfortunately Jojo not being able to get it up. Get it out, get it past, and it puts Paul Ruiz in a two goal lead so far with just 20 seconds left. 
you got to think that this is Gray High not being able to muster as much as Paul Ruiz was in terms of pressure. Late opportunity coming out here from Gray High. They would love to be able to put this in. There is technically still time, but they would have had to do it in the first. Giving themselves, you know, five or six seconds gives them a kickoff goal opportunity. But good control. Again, Paul Ruiz A side mimicking their B side, maybe inspiring their, their B side into very solid defensive plays. Very good rotations, everyone getting involved with that blade, playing a good solid third man. Where he doesn't have to do anything, just takes a single shot, doesn't get credited with too many other points. Instead, Dang left with those opportunities. But if you find Dang, Blade, all of these players getting back and forth across the field, it is a team dynamic that keeps PRG in the lead consistently. And it's a really nice mentality to have. That you can play as much as you want on your own. You can get as good as you want on your own. But at the end of the day, when you really want to start playing good Rocket League and making a name for yourselves in competition, you need to be able to play with people as well as on your own. Sure, you've got to have those moments of brilliance to carry yourself or make a big opportunity for the old players to follow up with. But at the end of the day, when you start to get to great players, it's not going to be about the 1v3 game. It's going to be about the 3v3 game. How well can you utilize your team's resources, utilize stuff like the backboard, create opportunities, get bump plays, uh, which we've seen very little out of, actually, between any of these teams today. You know, at the end of the day, ooh, Parky, a nice little uh, fake out there on the first player. Doesn't manage to bait out the second one. Oh, a great angle coming out there. Blade on a knife's edge. All puns intended on this channel, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know me, altruism is synonymous with terrible jokes and great puns. But managing to get that one into the back of the net. Blade sinks it there. Porus Gymnasium take again a nice early lead, 30 seconds into the game. And eventually those are the those are the mechanical brilliant moments that you've got to be able to get from players. Players who can consistently hit the good players. Get a nice second touch like Blade just does there. Even go for that 50. Force out a reaction from the other side. Greyhire having to invest too many resources to a single challenge. Like this one. Eight bar mark. Having to go for it forces all three players with that double commit there to come and get involved in the play. Now Dang, having so much space in the world, is able to take it forward on low boost. Even though it doesn't manage to get anything, it's again a triple commit to this play from Greyhire. Not able to get anything out of it. That one was a good opportunity, managing to find a rare opportunity through the center. But it's straight away the turn comes around. Two more players up from Greyhire. Sends them into a deficit. A good clear from H-Bar Mark. If that had been on target, it could have actually been an open turnaround goal. A great shot there, Alpha Jojo testing the two defenders, forcing the ball in between them. But the crisscross of defenders able to be able to get up to that. The pace not enough. A great aerial play coming out from Dang, wanting to get the flip reset, an advanced mechanic off the ceiling, but not able to get there. Still creating the pressure, cramping it up in the corner here. Not like soccer where the ball can go out and you can hope for a throw in or a corner kick. Maybe even a goal kick. It's going to be played off your backboard. Think indoor hockey styles of players being able to utilize that as an extra player and be able to get it out. Of course, there are extra game modes in Rocket League. There are basketball. There is, uh, we call hoops. There is even ice hockey, uh, which no one talks about and no one plays. There's even been American football. Try it out there. So many opportunities and such growth in Rocket League as a game. And it's so nice to see the growth of the player base, the community around it, even communities like you, the Twitch chats, the YouTube chats, wanting to get involved with that. Like I said earlier, if you think that your team is going to win, so far, Paul Ruiz, a single game up in the best of five. I'm looking to take a second one as we're halfway through the second game. Two goals up, a beautiful pinch off the side there. And again, that aggression comes through, leaves that gray high defense standing and Paul Rose Gymnasium being able to pick up a second one. I actually want to, to try to pull up that chat in the background. If you guys are there, say hi. Let me know you're enjoying the action. I'm just going to try to get my producer to send me the link that is being produced on. But I want to know what you guys have to think. Uh, is this your first time watching any esports? Are you here for a specific esport and haven't really followed Rocket League much, but after the Counter-Strike, you stuck around and you're enjoying the action. Are you thinking of picking it up for the first time? Are, are you supporting your teammates, a specific player? Are there friendly wages going on that you know about in the background? Love to hear your thoughts on this in the chat. 
right now. Porus doing a good job again of just securing their back lines. Inferno going up there, one, two players. Dang, retreating back, realizing his teammates were up. And good awareness to, to be there to shut down the potential opportunity by 8 Bomber. Blade now going to be able to pick it up. Puts a nice pass off the backboard, even tries for the second touch. But it is going to be defended and nicely outshadowed by the Grey High defender there. Dang, going to come off the back wall. Nice pass towards the center. Eight by Mark. The touch is there. The second shot just wide. It's going to be the third shot denied by Blade. The first real big offensive opportunity. All three players getting involved there by Gray High. Love to see that synergy by them. Just realizing that this is our chance and being involved with it. Unfortunately, not being able to pay off. This is also the first time of consistent offense. Uh, some pressure being built here. Uh, they have rotated back nicely. Eight by Mark just realizing that they can't keep this up forever. They had some time for it. They don't have a lot of time left to make this work. A touch by Inferno sends it up onto the backboard. A nice touch out there. Leaves the deficit. It's going to try be a demo. 50-50 uh, uh, attempt by Pocky. Settles for the demo at the end there. There's going to be a respawn before there is going to be any uh, opportuni opportunistic uh, demos coming out there. That's leading to a goal. Perky going up in the, or Parky at least, going up in the air. Uh, very nice and high. Alpha Jojo a little bit out of position now, trying to commit too many resources into that corner. And there's still a player around. Inferno doing a good job to put a lot of players out of position now. And with 17 seconds left on the board, it is going to be Paul Ruiz looking confident again in the second game. Gray High would love to be able to at least get a goal back, turn some momentum. It's a great pass towards the center, but there's no one there. Yet again, Gray High, a little bit defensive on this, unable to capitalize on this. Uh, these few opportunities that they have made. It's always nice to see though, them making those opportunities. They're getting uh, forward a little bit more, starting to work on the, uh, on their, their chances, you know, try and create some opportunities, try and create some uh, some places, some some movements, some backboard reads. You know, that, those are the, the typical bread and butter of what a good Rocket League player needs. First and foremost, you take advantage of any mistakes your opponents makes. Secondly, you start to get a basic dribble, start passing it around the corner, roll it up and drop it down in front of the goals, maybe drop that in with a, a pass then you start looking for backboard passes infield passes from your teammates and that after you got the hang of all those sort of basic mechanics the, the way to get the ball to your teammates and then have someone there waiting in the in midfield just it's very difficult to kind of cut that off as a defender and guard your goal at the same time so the attackers typically have the advantage at that stage like this one popping out towards the center you would think paul ruiz had the opportunity there and now it's up to gray Hart to create some opportunities themselves when they drop it out like that, when there's a mistouch, something has been tried. Uh, you, you just, you got to back it up and try again. Parky, this one, trying to create something off the backboard. Tries to go for that extra little touch. A little bit of chip towards the center. Leaves an overlap. Paul Rose able to push forward a little bit faster. And Blade controlling this midfield well. Puts it high and slow, meaning it's a difficult clear for Gray High. They have to keep some momentum behind them if they want to try to get long, hard clears. Mark by eight, settles by, for a soft touch. Trying to drag it up over it, but he's actually just lifted above his team. Dang sets it down and finished off by Inferno. It all set up in that midfield. Mark by eight by Mark. Not able to go forward with that ball. Instead, it just sets up a midfield attacking opportunity. And Paul Ruiz always keen to take advantage of that. Oh, I see we don't have a chat for the stream, unfortunately. Well, guys. If you're not going to be able to chat on the YouTube video, then definitely get onto Twitter, shout out your players, tag me at Ultraism, tag at ACGL for this. Uh, we'd love to hear if you manage to get this, if this is your first time. So much excitement. Um, get to know some other players in your community. Go give some love to aspiring Rocket League players. I mean, these Paul Roos players are guys who did so well in VS last year. Uh, definitely want to get picked up. Uh, we've got here, uh, Oparky, who's joining us from the Apex side, who's, you know, started already trying to make a name, trying to get out there into that club scene, uh, look to, to make esports maybe a potential long-term opportunity. Paul Russ taking these games very seriously, you know, reaching out to ACGL to put on a board cast like that is great. Wanting to give their players a little bit more exposure. And this is what happens when you take it seriously. This touch from the center here, Dan getting it up. Pass on to Blade in the 1-2 handoff again as Dang rotates around the corner. Gets it up. Alpha Jojo going up for that first touch. 
doesn't realize that it's just off the backboard and I love to see the synergy coming out there. That's what happens when you start to get aggressive. You start to go forward and you make opportunities happen. You know, I've, I've heard of people saying, you know, Rocket League, sometimes it's luck. You just, the, the opponent misses it. And uh, there's two parts to that. First and foremost, Rocket League is a physics-based game. There is no such thing as luck, except perhaps where you spawn after a, re, uh, after a demo. This one going to come through, though. No luck involved, just calculated precision coming out from Paul Rose Gymnasium. Picked up so well by his Inferno or Inferno there. And I think it was Dang who opened up that goal line with the demo. It's going to be Blade to sink it into the open, vacant back line of the Nets. And Paul Rose Gymnasium in their second game now. Looking to put a real cabal on this entire series. Nearly picking up a kickoff goal there. The Trickler able to be fended off though. Inferno put it dangerously towards his own net. One attempt goes awry. Alpha Jojo instead putting it towards the corner instead of favoring the shot there. Gives some time for Paul Ruiz to push it down towards the other side of the field. Inferno trying some trickery. Trying to knock the defender into it. Dang not able to get it up for this one. And leaves a bit of a vacant ball in the midfield. Everyone floundering around it but no one really getting good connection on the ball leaves it open full risk now managing to chain something together here a nice pass it's caught up on the backboard but blade waiting patiently there tries to get another touch in fact does is gonna find the pass down inferno not in the best opportunity his car was sideways after trying to track that movement around the side of the field this one gonna punch down though it's going to be Paul Ruiz under a bit of pressure for a little bit here. Grey High would love to pick this up. They've still got two minutes left, and you can pick up three goals to force it for an overtime. But they've got to do it now. Just the hesitancy. No one wanting to really take this up. Blade just being a constant nuisance, getting in the way of anyone who wants to slow down play from the side of Grey High. And I'd love to see Grey High pick up the pace. Go for a little bit more of those riskies when you're the first man. This one having to be cut off on the goal line. Dang, Nick. Nearly making an exceptional job of that one. Gets over the defender. This one, a two-person commit. Has to pinch it across the goal line. Grey High really not looking confident in their defense, but working hard at it. A chance for here. Eight by Mark. Going to receive the pass. Sends it up high. A clangor of a shot. Eight by Mark. Reading this. A great passing play coming out here. And this is what happens when you start looking for opportunities. Alpha Jojo. Very happy that that clear opportunity, maybe not calculated in the past, but certainly effective able to be picked up the only difference between that and the super high level players is that they're doing that slightly faster they're doing that slightly more often and uh doing it just to more efficacy and even being shut down on those opportunities being able to read that the opponents are able to do that they're looking for something like that and intercepting it before it even happens this is the sort of game sense that we're hoping players are able to start picking up and you know what? When you start hitting a couple of those, you have the awareness. When it, it feels so good to be able to pick up a great play. That's the best thing about Rocket League. You could have been playing terribly for six months. Kind of like golf in the way that you just need that one perfect shot. That sound of the clang as it ricochets off into the distance. It's just, it's such a, a great symbolic symbolism rather uh, for if you guys are aware of other sports you haven't really picked up anything to do with this if you're a teacher we would love for you to get hold of us at altruism you guys i'm sure could find me if you tried hard on some of the, the high school leagues uh coaching the thomas moore league get in touch i would love to hear what your experience has been with high school esports uh, what have you thought about organizers like acgl taking some initiative getting involved to help people who don't get to see this bring it out into the open make this more of a day-to-day -day life uh, this might be your first Rocket League experience, and I hope it's been excited. It has been Porus Gymnasium A side managing to pick up their second game here against Grey High from Port Elizabeth A side. Still ball up in the air, and the buzzer's not going to sound until it touches the ground. Parky looking to keep it up. Inferno desperately wants to stick around. Blade actually making a good opportunity. He gets it towards the center. Dang, nearly up there for the shot at the end of it. It wouldn't have counted either way. But there's always just that little bit of smugness that comes from scoring an extra time goal there. Just three goals. Everyone from PRG stepping forward. Blade, Dang, and Inferno all managing to come through. And the even better thing about this is the three assists that back that up. Every one of the plays in involving the entire team. A total of 10 shots coming out there from PRG with just the one from Greyha. Greyha definitely having more opportunities. 
but not needing them. Uh, not, not managing to at least take advantage of them. Not even being credited with the shots. They got the one shot. They got the one goal. It is the end of our series. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I was wrong. We do not have another game. PRG managing to clean this out in both of their series. A good 3-0 on both of those. Congratulations, Paul Roos Gymnasium. Yet again, stipulating and showing off that they are a potent team in any esports. We saw it in the Counter-Strike. We've got to see it now in the Rocket League. Still great play from Grey High. So much to improve on. So much to learn. And so much to fight for. I am really excited to see what, what plays they can put up. That's been it from me, though. Altruism here for ACGL Rocket League. Paul Rus from Denizen versus Grey High. We will be back in a little bit with some League of Legends action. I cannot wait. we got so much talent here to bring it through there. Uh, Dyad, if I'm not mistaken, going to be the one to bring you that. It's going to be exciting, ladies and gentlemen. So go grab something to eat, grab something to drink, and we'll be back in just a little bit for League of Legends. It's been my pleasure, and I'll see you just now.
and welcome back to the final game of the Paul Ruiz versus Gray High School tournament. We're on our last title, which is League of Legends, where it's only a best of one. So you'll have me, Dea, for the next 45 minutes to an hour. Starting off in the ban phase, we have bans coming out from Scion and Jinx. Paul Ruiz is on blue side at the moment, which is the left side. And on red side, we have Gray. Polaris has been a fantastic contender for League of Legends over the last few years, especially winning the last, last AAS HS League. But since then, a few of the players have matriculated and retired, so we'll be looking at probably a fairly new um, team. We'll have to see how well their synergy is together. I know LNT is dog is a grade 8 player, probably his first dual match. First pick, Valkos comes in. This could be a flex, flex pick. It could be support Valkos or mid. Both known to drain terror on squishies and catch people out of position. It also opens opportunity for any objective steals as well, which is something we love to see. They decide to go for the Urgot, which is a very good bully in lane. Nothing too unorthodox there. Be interesting to see where they pick up supports in this rotation and they start hovering the Yumi. Yumi and Urgot are a fantastic combo. They seem to vouch for the victor instead. We now have our top lane and mid lane knocked in for grey side and the jungle comes in for blue side. Trying to get a read on these comps, it seems to be a mixture between poke and engage for Paul Ruiz. With that in mind, it's interesting to see what bands will come out after the first three are chosen. A lot of very tanky champions have been banned on in Paul Ruiz's first rotation. They'll need some way to deal with the already tanky set and Warwick. Because that's a lot of healing, especially if set takes Conqueror. Kaiser comes in for ADC. Very good range with W, especially with the new Ludens build or Crown, should that person decide to go with it. Next ban's coming through. If I was in Gray's position, I would be banning out ADCs at this point. Especially ADCs that can deal with their comp. Morgana comes through, taking out the CC. Always a fantastic ban, no matter what the composition. The Morgana blinding lasts way too long and is a terror when you're trying to lock down someone with CC. Next ban coming from Paul Rose's side. That's the Echo. Echo in the jungle. Final ban from Grey is... Most games are won in Champ Select, which is why you see these players taking a long time to decide what they can take out and what they can pick in response. Very big mental fortitude is needed here that carries on throughout the game. With two ADCs banned, what? would Paul Ruiz's next move be? There are some versatile picks like Caitlyn, Zaya, and Lucian open, which could all work in this comp. It hinges slightly on the support as the Nort is hovered, a fantastic support, and that's probably why the Morgana was banned, so it wouldn't be able to counter the Nautilus pick. If the Diana gets locked in, then it just proves that the Valkos was a flex pick, and that would be a Velcro support and not mid lane. A good read, because that means the Morgana banner was fairly useless. And it is a Velcro support with Rostana bot lane. A very scary combo if you get hit by 
spell causes knockup, and Jasana can go in and destroy almost any ADC. The Nautilus is a good pickup there, because as Valkos does damage, Valkos also is a very squishy target. And if Nautilus can land a combo, Kaiser can follow up with ult very easily and get those plasma stacks off. It looks like we have a Trundle in the jungle. I love how that rolls off the tongue. We'll have to, as soon as this game starts, go into a two minute delay. So during that time, let's look. Everyone's swapped. And we have the captain, Jerry Perry, is the support on Valkars. I'm not too sure who the, the captain is on Gray's side, but we'll see how these teams play it out. Just looking at the teams immediately, I must say I am a big fan of both teams. They have a very good array of CC on Gray's side, the Nautilus. Um, the Trundle can be very difficult to deal with as well. The Urgot Victor all have some small crowd control as well. Crowd control is just movements that slow, stun, or make it easier for your team to get the kill. And there's a lot of CC from Diana, Set, and Warwick. A very good mix of damage. AP, AD. This is a really good team comp from both sides. I honestly don't have a favorite. And we're now waiting for the spectator delay. Going into this a bit more, Valkos will be able to mull through some of the tanks, such as Nautilus and Trundle, with his passive, which deals true damage, hence you can't build defenses against it. If I was a set, I'd also be worried of Trundle just ulting me and taking all that tankiness for myself. In this fight, it looks like they'll be trying to get onto the Victor and Kaiser and trying to eliminate them as soon as possible, either through Set or Diana, or they have the other option of Valkos poking them out and Tristana finally initiating when it is key. What's really going to dis um, choose um, decide the game is the first person to make a mistake, because the moment you're caught out in either of these comps, there's so much punishing mechanics between the two, especially when you're running someone like Nautilus. In a game like this, I would say patience is the key, and we'll see how well each team knows how to play their compositions. This is not a solo queue game, so I'm not expecting any weird, crazy plays, maybe some invades starting first. But when it comes to competitive esports like this, it matters very little how high your, your rank is. I saw some bronze, some gold, some silvers. And what really makes a difference is how you you can play as a team to overcome maybe those individual differences that you have. Because I have seen very individually bad players, not that I'm saying anyone here is, come together and beat teams that were ranked higher just purely on the amount of how well they play together. So I won't maybe be making any predictions based on rank or things like that. It's purely do you know your champ? Do you know what your team is good at? And how do you play that to your advantage? I do expect and invade coming from Nautilus side because it's always something fun to watch. Nautilus at level one has fantastic lockdown tools with Q and then the passive that stuns. The Victor and the Kais could follow up on that, but it also depends on where they invade from. There are several favorite routes. I personally love the bot lane gank, which comes through a lack of vision and it turns into the tribush. Otherwise, lane ganking mid or even invading on red side is applicable. Blue side might look to defend by each entrance, and if they do that, they do make themselves slightly weaker, or they can go as a unit and try and respond to an invade. The only thing is they have to be ready for that. Either that, or they can predict the invade and go for their own invade on a different side. Maybe get some ward, get some vision, get some information. With all that speculation out of the way, let's get straight into the game. Once again, while we're waiting to load, this is Paul Ruiz versus Gray High School. Paul Ruiz being um, the top side and Gray being the bot side. I am Adam Dea coming to you from ACGL, bringing you this friendly tournament, which is going to set up the standings for the rest of the year. We say friendly, but 
going into this, it gives us stats to look at what we're looking forward to for the upcoming season. And we are straight in. Things coming out from bear size, and let's see how they path. Everyone's there except the Nautilus and Tristana seem to wade behind a bit. That kind of takes off the option of an invade unless they do go for a delayed one. We have Trundle hovering topside, getting wards down. Both junglers going to do that and then return for probably a red trinket. Very standard play as both teams have information about each other. Very somewhat telegraphed play as both Warwick and Trundle get a red trinket. Looks like it's going to be a standard start red side with Grey High School just starting at the blue and Paul Ruhr starting at red with the help of bot lane. Very fast, very efficient to start with your bot side. It's just much faster than asking your top laners to help you start. You, you start the game healthier and more faster to get onto your first gank. And inevitably means the first gank is probably on your side. I find the Ignite on Warwick very interesting. Um, I know some people take Ghost or Flash. We'll see how that plays out in their flavor. For some background, I am... Uh, jungle and support main myself so it'll be interesting to see how these teams adjust from that angle Warwick clears red and goes straight to blue side jungle very interesting path we'll see how much he can get out of that or well, we have blows being exchanged in the top lane pots are popped and set is already on half his HP. Very difficult. Urgot is known as a lane bully with all that range and he can work really hard to push set off those minions. Meanwhile Diana is being pushed under tower as again we have the melee versus range matchup happening. This always happens at the beginning in both lanes and it's whether you can catch them out and scale better to actually come back. The Anna almost pushed out completely. Really strong start from Grey High School. Really bullying them out of lanes where they can. That does, however, as you can see, Warwick Path Top set up for ganks. But it looks like... Oh, got in a bit of trouble, gets caught by the CC, and that's possibly first blood, although the flash comes out, and that is first blood, going over to Paul Ruiz. Fantastic gank. What happens when you push in? You get ganked. You need wards, but some people neglect that early game. This will make this fight for Scuttle much more harder, because Paul Ruiz does have the advantage of numbers here. They grab the Scuttle. Ooh, Warwick is somewhat out of position. He drops the Ignite, tries to get the kill very quickly before Victor can respond. But I think he'll have to leave it. Still running, but that will be it. Knights are down, some summoners have been used, and we're off to a very exciting start. Oh, and Valko seems to be have seems to have been killed. Unfortunately, I missed that. Kaisa gets the kill there. The CS is still even bot lane, even with that kill. And CS is looking very good, except for mid lane. But it's early games, and that will even out as Diana gets more HP and more damage. Fortunately, it's just too difficult right now for Diana to stay in the lane. Looks like she's asking for some help from her jungle, and he's just going to cover this while she backs. And still soak up some XP. We have a slight delay on stream. Apologies for that. Kaiser returning with a tier and longsword. Very happy to just keep pressing Q, keep farming those stacks as she'll build into Muramana. 
just on a yet to recall we'll probably push this in and then look to base to get some money uh to get some items more poke coming out from Valkos and they're gonna stay maybe greed for a plate I would have recommended backing there because that would have been a fantastic time to not interrupt your wave and safely back oh it's hovering mid Trying to see if you can get a scuttle, but to no luck, sees the plant and knows that Trundle's possibly in the, in, in the area pings, but is he too late? It's got up by a ward. They could flank the Warwick and catch him out here. A fight's gonna erupt, knockup comes up. I don't know if Warwick wins this 1v1 at this point. Mid lanes are both coming down, and Warwick will be taken out of the fight. That was all who responded quicker, and it turns out that Grey just was slightly faster with that mouse. Grey's sitting now at a 1k gold lead. But at this point, that could be anything. Full engage from Diana gets shut down completely by Victor, who hits level 6. And that's a very good advantage. Diana is severely behind on 12 CS. While well, Victor is a kill and 40 CS up. He is going to be quite a monster and may snowball from here, depending on how they play it. Meanwhile, top lane has turned into a peaceful chill zone as they await more ganks. And I and I await for stream to resume. Been one recall each on top side. Vision is set up very well by Grey down in the river as I anticipate that first dragon. Rundle looks like he's trying to make a position top, but it is warded. We'll see if he gets caught out. So they see immediately the ward is cleared. Meanwhile, it looks like Valkos is clearing all the vision that Grey painstakingly put up. And looks to roam mid lane. Unfortunately, they do know he's there. They assume he's there because they saw him clear the, the ward. The Diana is being really smart and knowing that if she pushes up, she could get caught. And if she dies again, she will really be in trouble. Warwick looking to sneakily take this dragon with Valkos poking it out of range. If I was Grey, I would have no idea this is happening. A very sneaky plant play. Valkos still just hovering there. I'm sure they have no idea where he is at this point. As bot lane pushes in with the advantage they have in a 2v1 scenario. Warwick Graham grabs the dragon. They get a flash out of Victor. Fantastic comeback play by Paul Ruiz as they look for the situational awareness. Very good map read. Fantastic, actually. That is how you get back in the game. You don't make risky plays and you realize where your strengths are. And Warwick taking Dragon, that's definitely one of your strengths. Followed up by Ward. And we go into a bit of a lull. CS is fairly even topside. Pretty impressive when you have a melee versus ranged matchup. Jungles are also looking a bit even the reason why Trundle is a few camp, well, a singular camp up is because Warwick did go for that Dragon Seal, but now has the opportunity to go and pick up the rest of his camps. Bot lanes just poking each other out and looking for any advantage they can get. CS is also quite even. It just seems to be the weakness of the mid lane at this point in time. Next objectives that Warwick might look at is possibly Dragon, or even a gank mid. It looks like they're engaging. Diana's chunked very low, gets the flash out. She seems to be safe. And Warwick will pick that up with the ult. And it goes straight over to Paul Ruiz. Fantastic gank. And giving that Diana some breathing room. They've noticed the weakness and they're trying to support it. Fantastic team play. You even had Set roaming down, but he didn't have to get there eventually. That was just in case he got out. TP's ready and he's back into lane immediately. Picked up a phage and a pickaxe. Bot Urgot moving down, trying to check if they're doing uh, uh, doing Herald. 
all standard plays. Guys are getting nicked by a Q. Things are very painstakingly even in the bot lane. Seems they're considering fight around this Herald. Small Herald is secured, and by that I mean Scuttler. Everyone just susses each other out and stares them down like Clint Eastwood. It's been a long game, a day of gaming, and I'm very grateful if you're still with us. Um, we had some hitches, but I'm very glad that high school esports can get to the point where it is, where we can just tune in and watch some games and see some growth in players. This is really the area where I'd really love to see schools taking the initiative, coming out, and showing what they're made of. Because this is definitely how the community grows. I know schools have been very interested in getting into esports for a long time. And we're really looking to get to exposure, not just as players, but as shot passes and things like that. Well, we're coming, pushing them off. Ults to try and secure, has to flash away. Who grabbed that? That was Ray High School. And they're now being pushed off the Herald so that they cannot pick it up. They'll guard this until it expires, which just wastes Gray's time. Fantastic play. Gray is, however, still in the lead by 2k gold, but it's not something you can evidently see at the moment. The so Valkos has been roaming a fair amount, leaving our poor Tristana by themselves, but there comes a lot of trust with that, because even in that situation, Tristana up in CS... And the, the enemy bot lane has just recalled. And if you look at the level differences, he's managed to pick up a bit of XP there. Nothing crazy substantial, but fantastic e time rooms from the support. This is looking like a very good game on our hands. It's almost a shame we don't have a best of three here, to be honest. TP coming out top lane. As the wet noodles start fighting each other again in top lane. I'll be interested to see, because no matter how far Diana gets, she's still an insanely big menace with her QE and alt combo. If she catches enough people out, even if she's behind, she will make her value known. Whereas Victor, as a very, especially in the early game, squishy champ, you need to be able to play around his damage and rotations. Warwick looking like he's wanting to come mid. He sees he's out of positions, forces the flash again. Might have to ult away. Ult straight in. Diana does not have ult. Was that a misplay? The ult came very late there and it leads to two deaths on the side of Paul Ruiz. Very unfortunate because that looked like a very good gank. With that, Grey High School should be able to pick up the dragon here. Only thing that could happen is what was the aforementioned... Uh, Velko steal onto the dragon, and let's see if we get a highlight clip. Get some vision, and unfortunately, that's it. The alt and W uh, E comes out slightly late. In that situation, I've known some teams that don't even try and just push for plates. The only problem is that if you time it incorrectly, you'll just get collapsed on after dragon is done with. So it's a weird balancing act but it's something that you could have done alternatively. I'd be way too <laughs> afraid to try and do that though. That requires utmost trust. Based on items, I'd say Ergo's doing a lot better, and he's aware of that as he flashes away as he gets ganked by the Warwick. Ian to flash, you can cover so much distance, which is why a bruiser like Urgot, who can be a little bit squishy at times until he gets some items, survives ganks like that. That and good old Army Cinder. Another room coming up from bot lane, trying to get the support, uh, the, the mid as much help as he needs. But luckily, Gray has learned and they've put quite a few wards to spot him out. They know he's hovering there. 
which if they do know, honestly to me means that they should be looking to make an engage on this Tristana. Very slippy cha champion, high mobility, hard to lock down, but they do what they can. I'm just impressed with this this um, this Tristana. She's been alone for a lot of the the game, and she's managed to get a CS lead. Doesn't have the kills, has, hasn't had the opportunity to, but has slowly been scaling. I would say in an outright fight at the moment, she would lose against the the Muramana, but if she keeps this up, one big cash out, and she'll be so relevant. She's quite literally a ticking time bomb at this point. Very interestingly, oh, Valkos gets caught, and that could be a dead, gets a double knock-up. That is definitely a dead Valkos. Heal comes through a little bit late. Buff is the W. Oh my goodness, that was a very good play. If Trundle had timed it differently, he would have interrupted that, but the Tristana reacted and manages to W the stun away. Fantastic play as we lose a massive fight mid lane. Let's go back and look at that quickly. A gank comes through, ult comes through, Warwick with the ult and gets a double kill that's a fantastic play with war uh by um victor coming from a slight misplay by the warwick all of us have seen that <laughs> the, the the dog's been let off the leash and he just runs past whoever he's aiming for uh very very sad moment for for most players <laughs> well then trying to look at for another play while they have Barthas out, but they know they won't get there really. We'll take the recall here as they reset and spend their money. Let's look at the gold for a second. We've got 2k up on Kaiser alone, making him much stronger than Tristana, especially with the recent back. I'll be interested to see what items she builds. Mid lane, there's also a 2k difference. And the rest is somewhat even. So we're looking at very big gold leads on the mid lane and the ADC, which are both the carries where you want the gold to be put. Honestly, that's looking fantastic for Grey as they lead this game 8-3 and three to 27k to 22k. We just missed a kill, so let's go and check that out. There's a gank happening top lane. Seth does his best to try and survive. Does he pick up the kill here? Almost. Yes, he does. And it's a one for one in top lane. It's Trundle securing the final kill. It's a very good trade for what they invested. But now we have Victor running for his life against three members of PRG. And without ult, Diana won't be able to catch or slow him. It was just off cooldown, and that's a shame. Although it's just retreats slightly. This is a very good game to be watching. I was really enjoying the Rocket League and the CSGO, but my passion is for League of Legends, and this game is fantastic. It's really interesting to see what the schools are capable of. Sometimes you come into a game, and you really don't know what to expect. Um, maybe you try and think, well, at least I do. Oh, TP coming down bot lane. Trying to make a play. If Seda's ult, that is a fantastic play. This could be where Tristana gets on the board if she gets the kill. And Set does unfortunately pick it up, which would have even the gold between the carries. But Tristan is patiently waiting for the next move. It was really well timed for Dragon as well. As they just stand and contemplate life. As I was saying previously, I think back to when I was in uh, high school and I was playing League. And I have to think, and obviously you're biased, was I this good? Eight to ten years ago, when I started playing League, not when I was in high school. Was I this good at League of Legends? It depends on what opportunities you have. And it's it's great that we're finding being able to grow the talent from a young age and give students a place where they can actually progress in a meaningful way. Very high school has gotten a lot, but I do enjoy the objective control that holders have at the moment. They have two dragons and have denied herald Ogre looks like he's caught out here and it looks like he's going to be dropping Un actually the ergot is a monster and manages to kill a very squishy valkos 
and getting out, almost taking down the Warwick. If he had landed that alt, that would have definitely gone to his. Uh, that would have definitely executed him. And with that, Gray had the opportunity to take this Rift Herald without being contested this time. Walk is in the area. Set is getting the victor off. He does does a lot of damage, but does he have enough? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he does. They did delay. Nope, Herald was finished, and Trundle did pick that up. This is looking pretty dire for Paul Rose, as they are 5k in the deficit. He becomes out from Victor to secure that bot lane. Paul Ruiz does have bounties on these towers, and honestly, if they were to pick those up, it would do marvels for their gold situation. Like, well, it's running straight into Urgot, maybe not paying attention, but just steers him away, and it's a simple drive-by to say hello. Gray looking to form mid and push that in with not really any available objectives at the moment. There's not much they can do besides farm up and wait for an opportunity to catch someone out. As I said earlier, this is a game of mistakes. First person to be caught out is the first person that will die. It just depends on what mistake that make that that turns out to be, especially with the Nautilus and Victor running around. Vision-wise, both teams have been fairly impressive. We see a lot of pink boards coming out from both sides. Always something that you can immediately tell makes it not a solo queue game. And you've got someone shouting in your ear to please buy as many pink boards as possible. Looks like they're trying to make a bot play. Paul Rose is outnumbered. They have to run away here. Velkos will drop and the War War Warwick will alt over the wall and be safe. They surely won't continue this, but the pick on Velkos is enough. Gives them advantage of spot, and Victor will just respond mid lane as well. Herald is summoned, and that tower will go down. W connects, and if Kaiser wanted to, she he could have queued, um, altered in there, but with the knowledge that Warwick is there, probably just going to get CC'd by the fear. Second charge from the Herald, and it is really doing work. Good job, Shelly. They'll pick up this tower here, and almost tag. Just on again. TP coming from set. Almost interrupted by Urgot. But they know that he's coming. What can he do against these many people? Just sneakily hiding away. And now he's there. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any backup. So I'm not sure what the final call is. Kaiser ults away. And the flash follows. So amazingly tanky. Fairly good play. Coming from the set. If only his team could have followed up. I don't know if there was a miscommunication or if they were just prioritizing the farm. Definitely could have been a point where they came back in the game from. Dragon is up soon. And Paul Rus being 10k behind. Dern look like they're in a good position to be able to contest it. And that's when it becomes scary. When you get those dragons piling up and all those buff coming. And eventually you get to Elder Drake. Many games don't last that long, but for the undecided, or the ones that don't really close out, that's generally where you have to make your bed. I feel so sorry for this trust for this Tristana, because I feel like Paul Rose's AD carry has really wanted to pop off, but hasn't really been given the support or opportunity to. He's doing his best not to get caught out and contribute. To the statistics. This is the really fun part of Kaiser for me when you get enough AP. I love smashing those W's out. Look how much damage that is. It's honestly unorthodox. You get such a good ADC for the usual things like damage and mobility, but then that W poke is just insane. Especially if he decides to opt for Ludens. Victor caught out here. Someone will have to respond. Has the flash. Fairly decent trade for them. Valkos again attempts to steal, but unfortunately doesn't get anything. Ah, 
The set manages to pick up the tower, and I love that confidence. It's been a difficult game for the set top lane against the, the Urgot, but he's starting to really get tanky. The Hullbreaker just does wonders for split pushes, and just people that like to be by themselves. <laughs> wow, what a cheeky <laughs> recall deny. I really thought he was out there, but... Because he definitely doesn't want to take that fight at this point. But <laughs> that delay forces him to stay. And now we have people prioritizing coming to Baron, getting some vision, and maybe taking a look at what they can do top lane. When you got two teams with the same idea, you turn out the team fight. Could be in slight. He has been so amazing at landing those grabs. Sees the Valkos, knows he's weak, and. This is Paul Ruiz in a bit of a sticky wicket. The amount of time it took Grey to collapse there was fantastic. And this should be a secured Baron. And they started up. If you're Paul Ruiz, what can you do here? With three members standing, unfortunately not much. You can't steal this, you can't go in. Justana just farms, realizes that it's probably not the play to make just to go in and senselessly dies and just farms to get some CS and become somewhat relevant but unfortunately is behind in items it's two completed items on Kaiser versus one completed on Tristana not including the boots in fact if you look at the the item difference at the moment it is quite staggering Victor is looking to get to the point where he more or less one shots people in three rotations uh, not three rotations three abilities which I guess is not a one-shot, but in the amount of times it takes him to use those spells, it basically feels like a one-shot. There he stands, waiting to catch people out. Fortunately, he won't. Interesting thing about some AP supports at the moment, which have been a little bit in me meta with Lux, Brand, and um, obviously the Valkars, is that when you land your Ludens proc, it does so much damage with the range ability. You go for your event horizon next and you can be a complete terror. Very sneaky steal from uh, Trundle in between almost three Paul Rose players and he almost gets collapsed on. But at this point, I don't think he minds too much as the empowered minions push into the base. They're going for a 4-1 split. as Paul Ruiz are forced to, um, to get five people mid to respond. Eventually they'll have to have someone respond top and that is probably when they'll start making a massive dent in the Paul Ruiz base. Jungle identifies that bot lane is also pushing in and comes to give it a helping hand. With two uh, cannon minions on the way, that wave is going to be strong. If Paul Ruiz is going to take a fight, they're going to have to do it now when there are three mid and four of them there. But unfortunately, they just don't have the damage, the defense, the stats to deal with this. Kaisa is destroying them with this W. And she just snipes three in a row and kills Warwick. This completely assassinates him. It's the massive power of the Kaisa PDC. And now they're looking to push it, investing flashes just to get these kills. They're looking to end the game out here. And unfortunately, <laughs> minion stops, and we're out. This should be game, everyone. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the first game of League of Legends between Paul Ruiz and Grey High School this year. Well played to Grey High School. This has been Adam Dea for your League commentary. Hope you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you for some more league action in a few of the other school games coming up in the following weeks.